you move that first slide, please. It has become a practice in our house biannually that we gather George the monkey and my son Ben there, and we head to Texas Children's to get his heart checked out through an echocardiogram and all kinds of fun tests. Next slide. It's, uh, if you'll notice, my son has a little more hardware than most of us do in their chest. As you can see, they've taken metal and strapped his chest together. He thinks that's pretty cool. And uh, I guess he's right, but it also means that we have to keep a very close eye on him. It is a little nerve-wracking as his daddy, because we don't know when Ben's heart is going to need additional help. So every six months, we go to Texas Children's to see how it's doing. Next slide. Uh, they lay him down on the bed, and they take that machine, and they start looking to see how the blood's flowing, how the heart's behaving. And there's a screen that they shows all the pictures as to what's going on with his heart. And for the life of me, I can't figure out what I'm looking at. You understand, that, that's a big issue for me. Because I'm kind of a jack of all trades, really, to a fault. Uh, when I was a student here, I was a psych major, Theo Minor. Um, I was on staff here as a senior tech in the computer lab, developed pictures in Beck Center, and uh, I think I did some other stuff too, something with theology. But the point is, uh, I, I really have got a lot of interest. In fact, I've been a uh, practicing EMT for 12 years now, which if you really want to scare someone to death, uh, forget to tell them that you're a pastor and ask them if they want to pray on the way uh, to the hospital. <laughs> It's made me a little leery about offering that up. But you see, I'm in the hope business now. Let me move to the next slide. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in the business of trying to bring promise in places uh, where it doesn't exist. I'm in the business of wanting to make things better uh, than they are, especially when things aren't going good. And one of the reasons I serve the church in the capacity I do is because I, I want to bring hope. I want to bring promise. In many ways, the same way Paul does too, because he's also in the hope business. And you hear in the scriptures today, he says, I am all things to all people. Pardon me, goes, yes, right, speak it, Paul. Uh, but truthfully, he's not talking about skill set. He's talking about ideologies. He says, to the conservatives, I'm a conservative. To the liberals, I'm a liberal. To the independents, I'm independent. To the communists, I'm a communist. And all for the sake of bringing hope to people. Why is he willing to sell out this way? Because he's determined to tell people about who Jesus is. And he's just not going to let his ideologies get in the way. He wants people to know and experience uh, love. And he's just not willing to let his own bias be the stumbling block that keeps that from happening. When we start crossing those lines, that's when something powerful starts to happen. That's when the gospel transforms and becomes something uh, amazing. You know, as a student here, I was blessed to get to sing under Sigurd Chris Johnson to a point he really annoyed the tar out of me. Uh, Sig passed away recently, but I remember the battles he and I used to get in during choir. He was such a perfectionist to a fault. In fact, I quit my senior year just to get back at him and quickly joined up before spring tour. <laughs> but in light of all his perfectionism and in light of his high standards, he was willing to walk with a dyslexic student through Greek day by day, week by week, until it was completed. I remember the day I, I, it was choir start. I ran in and I said, Dr. Chris Johnson, I passed Greek. And he looked at me and goes, what makes you think I don't already know that? <laughs> and on my seat, written uh, in backwards lettering because he thought it was funny, he said, good job on Greek test. <laughs> <laughs> Years later, he would send me emails the same way. <sighs> it was his own way of saying, I love you. I will miss him. 
when we begin to cross those lines in our lives, when, when we're able to find ways to counter our, even our own ideologies and share the love of Christ in places we wouldn't normally expect it, it means something different from the people it comes from, doesn't it? You know, imagine a conservative praying for someone at a de deportation center before they have to go back over to the country they came from. Or someone who's completely against the war praying for a soldier before they leave. It sounds different, doesn't it? Feels different. It's because it is. And in many ways, that's Paul's challenged us to, to be in the hope business despite ourselves. You know, I uh, have many jobs in my life, as I shared with you. I serve on uh, Angleton EMS once a month just for kicks and giggles. And on occasion, I am given a challenge, um, not really a challenge, it's I'm the driver for the bishop. I know, it's a high-ranking position. And uh, he calls me up on occasion and says, I'm going here, would you be willing to drive? And, well, of course, bishop, I would be glad to drive for you. And recently, I was asked to drive him here to Texas Lutheran so we can install our new president. And afterwards, I was uh, standing around with all the muckety-mucks and the higher-ups, right, trying to blend in as best I could. And I ran into uh, Dr. Squires. And we began to talk. Now, you have to understand that I have always respected Dr. Squires quite highly, but I, I'm scared to death of him. He's really smart, a lot smarter than me. And he is excellent in the field in which he studies. And I began to tell him a little bit about Benjamin and about, uh, you know, some of the stuff that uh, we have to do for him. And I figured he'd appreciate the conversation. It was when he began to convey to me his uh, concern, and he asked a very specific question. He says, tell me, who's a surgeon? And I said, well, it's Charles Fred. He goes, that man's hands are a gift from God. He says, your boy's in good hands. At that moment, Dr. Squires got into the hope business, didn't he? It reminded me of all the things I love about this place. It is a place where students come to learn how to bring hope into dark places. It is what we are called to do. It's how we do business, and it is what Paul calls us in his scriptures. In spite of our own indifferences and our struggles and our own ideologies, we still have to convey love and grace and peace and promise everywhere we go. And it, quite frankly, if it challenges our own ideas, it all makes it more special. Recently, I, uh, last month, was back on the uh, ambulance truck. If you flip that next slide for me. That's me back in the corner. And I uh, know it may look like I'm uh, looking at the camera, I had no idea this picture was taken. But the reason the medic took that particular picture is because the man who was back there with me was having a really bad day. His heart was failing, and he was scared. And in the back of my mind, I'm not kidding, I thought, you know, if Dr. Squires can bring a little hope to someone's day, so can I. And I leaned down, I said, sir, my name is Chris Lake, and I'm a pastor. Would you like to pray? because I, I'm in the hope business. And I hope you're in the hope business too. And I hope you're willing to share it with the people you encounter today because they need to hear it from you too. God's grace and peace to you and amen.